What is up guys, it's The Real Deal, back with another Ray Challenge video and today we are going to be looking at the creme de la creme, the best of the best, top 10 live arena nukers and man was this list hard to make. There are so many strong nukers in the game and yeah it was hard, hopefully you guys agree with me but if you don't please drop a comment below, who have I missed off the list and who are your favourite nukers um, and how are you guys finding live arena? I am really enjoying it. But I do think matchmaking does need some fine tuning. Um, you know, one minute I'm coming up against like absolute noobs or like young accounts that I'm just absolutely crushing. And then I'm just going from one extreme to the other where I'm coming up against absolute whales and krakens with like Usaga, Necred, Warlord, Yumiko, Sifi, Duchess. And, you know, I've got a really strong, healthy count that you can see. But even I'm struggling against these guys. And I do think they need to really fine tune it and have some more middle ground. But other than that, I am really enjoying it. And it is really good new content that's been well overdue. That's for sure. Um, but yeah, And if you are new to the channel, please do like and subscribe. It helps my channel grow and it motivates me to make more content for you guys. Um, so just before we get on with the list, I want to talk about why I choose these champions. Um, so for me, Nukas, it's not just about them having to hit really hard. It's what do they bring to the table? Why can I? Why can they carry my account so hard? And what you know? What have they got in their kit that really makes them stand out from the crowd? And um, for me, a really big one is like survivability, or some that can just hit really hard, so I can put them in stone skin and they can carry me in other ways. So let's check out the list. First on the list is Gishnak Venom Lord, aka the Rat King. And I had to include a bomb champion on this list. It is such a good way to deal with stone skin. And uh, the Rat King has to be the best for it. Um, so basically on his A3, he will uh, do an AoE attack on all the enemies and throw out two bombs. And after two turns, they will blow up. Then grants an extra turn. So then you go into his A2, which will 100% chance um, decrease the detonation countdown of all bombs by one turn. So that means that those bombs will go off when the enemy get a turn and you just blow up the entire team. Uh, I'd love him to be higher up on the list, but there are so many champions that counter him that um, cleansers and block debuffs like Duchess, like Sifi, like Pytheon, and they are everywhere in live arena. So that does make him a little bit weaker. If they don't have a cleanser or block debuff champion, definitely bring him in and you will destroy the enemy team. Coming in at number nine is Liores, the Proud. And this guy used to be easily top three Arena Nuka and he's been knocked all the way down to number nine, which is just crazy to think about it. But he's still such a strong champion. And if you do pull him, he is just an instant six star and you do need to gear him out. So what really makes him stand out is he's got great survivability. He's got a passive that instantly places unkillable buff on this champion for one turn before receiving a fatal hit. So that means it has to be a fatal hit. So even if he drops down to 3% HP, this won't proc, meaning he still gets another turn before pulling that unkillable buff on himself. Um, he also has a passive effect. The less damage he has, meaning he does more damage. So if he's only got 1% HP, he's going to do 99% more damage and it is just insane. He hits like an absolute truck. Um, he's got an A3 as well that hits really hard. It's an AoE hit, but also has a chance of placing True Fear. And True Fear is one of the most annoying debuffs in the game. It means they can lose a turn and it can put a skill on full cooldown. Absolutely brutal. And then he can also place Weaken for two turns as well, increasing his damage even further. He's also got an A2, which attacks all enemies two times. And he's also, if you don't use this ability, um, he's also immune to stun, free, sleep, provoke, fear, true fear, and parrot sonification. That is just insane. It's like he's just a killing machine. Um, yeah, and a really good thing you can do as well is you can lock out or don't use his A2 so he can't be CC'd. And he's got an A1 that hits two times and it just hits super, super hard. He is just a killing machine and he is still very, very strong. Coming in at number eight is Hepfrek. And I would love for this guy to be so much higher up on the list because he does absolutely smack and he's got some really unique abilities in his kit. However, 
there are so many strong force champions in live arena like uko like pytheon and there are so many tanky force nukers that do counter him so that's why he is where he is but he's still a very strong champion and what i really like about his kit is his a2 so it's an aoe attack and it places an extra hit on targets with less than 50% HP after the first hit and will ignore 15% of the target's defense for each hit. This is insane. It's basically like having built in Savage. And, you know, this is what's so unique about this is that it means that you can put him in stone skin. And what you can do is you can either go um, full stone skin so he gets protection for two turns, or you can go stone skin with cruel set so that he gets that 5% um, ignore defense as well. And it's just so strong, and it does hit like a truck. Um, it's got really nice A1 as well, which places an extra hit if the attack is a critical hit. Of course it is, because he's going to have 100 crit rate. Um, he's got a nice A3. I try to not use it, though, um, just because it can remove your stone skin. But what you could do is, you know, you use your A2, you use your A1, and then you can use this to help you get round to your A2 quicker. He also has a very nice passive. So when one of your allies is killed, this instantly activates his A2. So And it does absolutely smack. So you get to do this basically twice. Um, and it does not put the skill on cooldown. So sick. Just such a sick, sick champion. Coming in at number seven is Candrophon. And this is one of the false nukers I was talking about that does counter Hepafrek. And it's all about his passive. And it gives him great survivability. Um, so damage increases by 40% while attacking under Perfect Veil or Veil. Receives 40% less damage while under Veil or Perfect Veil. That is huge and that's what gives him great survivability. Also boosts his turn meter by 15% each time this champion receives damage while under Veil or Perfect Veil. That is a great skill kit. And it means that you don't have to put him in speed boots. You can just put him in attack percentage speed boots, which is going to boost his damage even more. Um, and he's also got an active effect, places a perfect veil buff on this champion for one turn each time an enemy's turn meter is filled. This buff cannot be removed and that will give him all the other benefits as well. That is a great counter to Cephi, um, Arbiter and just loads of other champions that boost turn meter. Such a good kit. Um, and also perfect veil is one of my favorite buffs in the game. I think people forget how strong it is because you can't be targeted and it just means that he's got even greater survivability um, and then it will put that all on him and then basically what happens is it'll be he'll get around to candrophon's turn and he does an a2 attacks one of me and it just absolutely smacks and grants an extra turn as well which is just insane um, and then he's got an a1 that attacks one of me and places an extra hit if the target is end up under any buffs he is just so good However, I do feel that he does need like a Duchess or Necred, someone that's going to help protect him so he can't be um, targeted and then just turn around and just drop the enemy team. But he is still a great champion and I wish I had him on my account. Coming in at number six, it's another demon spawn. Three in a row, it's Helicat. And he is a great champion to counter the force meta. Uh, I don't, you should see it in the live arena all the time. People are bringing in a lot of force champions especially higher up in live arena and he's a great way to do all that you can put him in stone skin so he can't be cc'd you want him to be quite fast but you also want him to bring a lot of damage you definitely want to have him lots of crit damage and defense but it's all about his a3 so he places a block debuff on all allies for two turns that is huge that's going to give your team and helicat loads of survivability and he does hit pretty hard but it's all about the passive um, counterattacks with the default skill whenever an ally is hit while under block damage buff can occur once per enemy turn. This is so big. Basically, he's just going to keep hitting with his A1 and it hits two times and it hits really hard and it ignores shield and block damage buffs. Um, just so, so strong. Um, and his A2 hits pretty hard, but it's just about his A3 and his passive and his A1 all working together to sort of just pick off the team one by one. And yeah, having that survivability and keeping your time alive is just great. You can bring in like another nuke with him. But yeah, he is such a great champion and a great counter to the force meta. Coming in at number five, it's one of the OGs, is Rotos. Back in the day, 
this guy was the number one nuka. Um, he has had a nerf since then, so he's not as strong as he used to be. And he is a single target um, nuka. However, that doesn't stop him. He can still start popping off and taking the enemy out one by one. Um, so he's got a great passive that gives him some survivability. Will decrease damage from enemy hits so that incoming damage from any single hit will not exceed 50% of this champion's max HP. So for example, if it's a Trunda, her A3 is a double hitter, that will kill him. But if it's a Candrophon and it's his A2, which is a single AoE hit, then that means that um, Rotos is basically going to get an extra turn to cut in when this procs. And then we can start using his abilities. Uh, he's got an A3, attacks one enemy, will ignore 60% of the target's defense, will also ignore unkillable and block damage buffs. That is huge. Someone like a Leores or Skull Crown, he will just go straight through them and kill them. Uh, enemies killed by this skill cannot be revived. To, to make this work is really difficult. I would ignore the fact they can block revive. But what's also great about this ability, grants an extra turn if the enemy is killed by this skill. The chances of being able to do this are very, very high. Um, he's got a great A2 as well that hits really hard, but can also um, still HP from the enemy and stick it on himself, making him really tanky. And he's also got an A1 that um, has a 75% chance of placing the big boy version of decreased defense for two turns. But it's all about that 25% chance, chance of granting an extra turn. I've had this so many times in Live Arena where my head threat is in stone skin and then basically their Rotos just does um, spams the A1 on my um, on my Hebfrek. And basically, it's happened like four times in a row and they just peel away that stone skin and then they just take out my Hebfrek. It is super, super annoying. Uh, also, another thing to note is all of his abilities are based on tack and HP. So you can stack attack and HP on him and he's just going to do so much damage. But having that HP as well is going to also give him great survivability still such a beast in the arena coming in at number four is harima and she is a force defensive base nuka by being forced she counters loads of magic champions and there are so many magic champions in this game so that makes her really really strong but also because she's defense based you stack defense on her which makes her really tanky and gives her great survivability but also increases her damage by so much as well because she's defense based and she's got an insane passive Enemy ignore defense effects are decreased by 50%. This makes her really survive, you know, makes her survivability go through the roof. Um, and champions from Demon Spawn cannot inflict critical hits on her. And also, she cannot land weak hits on champions from Demon Spawn. And Demon Spawn is one of the strongest factions in the game. This just makes her so, so strong. Um, but also, she's got an amazing A2 attacks one enemy three times each hit will decrease the target's defense by five percent stacking up to 30 percent uh, each hit will also increase this champion's defense by five percent and stacks up to a hundred percent that is just crazy and then instantly activates her a3 if the target is killed and her a3 is a hard hitting aoe attack such a sick champion um, and just, yeah, she is so strong. You should be seeing her everywhere in Live Arena right now. Coming in at number three is Baron. And this guy is just a killing machine. Um, it's all about his passive and A1. So if we look at his passive, attacks all enemies and will ignore shield buffs and block damage buffs, as well as 50% of the target's defense. So because of this, you can just stick him in stone skin so he can't be killed. He cycles around to his turn. And this will just drop the entire team. And it is an AoE attack, which is just crazy. And it's 50% of the target's defense. That is like twice as much as Savage gear. I mean, if you want, you could put him in Savage as well and just bring in loads of supported champions that are going to keep him alive. So he gets his turn. But yeah, just absolutely crazy. A1. His A1 will attack one enemy. But if you kill the target, any bonus damage, or sorry, any damage that's gone over killing that champion will go to the rest of the team. He is just an absolute, he's just insane how much damage this guy can do and definitely worth bringing in to the arena. Coming in at number two is Gorgrid, aka the Nutcracker. And you could argue this guy is number one. 
but he's very, very unique. And what makes him really stand out from the crowd is his A3, attacks one enemy and will ignore Strengthen and Stone Skin. Being able to ignore Stone Skin is just huge. And he's the only champion that can do this at the moment. Um, unkillable, block damage, increased defense, ally protection, and shield buff. Grants an extra turn if this attack kills an enemy. Of course, it's going to kill an enemy and he's going to get another go. Um, then you go into his A2, attacks all enemies and decreases the turn meters of all targets by 30%. This effect cannot be resisted. This means he doesn't need accuracy for this to happen. Um, places an unkillable buff on this champion for one turn if this attack kills an enemy. Of course, he's going to kill someone. And then he's going to get this unkillable buff as well. It's just insane. And not only that, he's got a passive that has a 50% chance for this champion to ignore 50% of the target's defense from each hit placed by this champion's skills. So because of this, you can put him in stone skin. And that means that, you know, he's even harder to kill. Um, but that's a bit more of a gamble. So it's up to you if you go savage or stone skin. But he's also got an A1 that attacks one enemy two times, but has a 30% chance of repeating the attack. So this can just keep procking multiple, multiple times. And because it's a double hitter and it's 30% chance, you know, it can just keep going and going and going. But he is an insane champion. And I wish, you know, he is probably my most wanted champion on my account. Coming in at number one is Taras. And this guy just absolutely slams. Not only is he a hard hit nuker, but he is just so hard to kill as well. He has the best survivability out of all the nukers by far. Um, so let's just go through his kit. He's got a passive. All incoming damage from skills is reduced by 50%. That is just huge. Um, when attacked, this champion's max HP will be decreased by 25% of the attack's initial damage before the damage reduction. That is a little bit strange, but he can cleanse that with his um, A3. So attacks all enemies, damage increases by 15% for each buff on allies, then increases the duration of all ally buffs by one turn. That is just crazy. Heals this champion by 5% of for every buff that has its duration increased, restores the decrease max HP, equal to the amount of any surplus heals. So what people do is they put him in stone skin. You bring in loads of champions, support champions. They're going to throw loads of buffs out like Brogni, like Duchess, Usaga, all those champions. They're going to make it really hard for you to kill him. And this ability hits so hard. Um, I brought an entire team in with stone skin and it went through every single champion with stone skin and just wiped my team. It is probably the hardest hitting ability with the right team around him in the game for sure. Um, and then he's got some other annoying stuff as well. So he's got another passive. When attack decreases the enemy's attack by 10% up to 50% and 25% against bosses. Once um, occurs once per skill, attack reduction resets after each round. And uh, places a fear debuff on all enemies from Orc, Ogren Tribe, Undead Horde and Demon Spawn at the beginning of each round. This debuff cannot be resisted. That's not super annoying, but it's just a little bit annoying. But it does really decrease the damage that the team can do to you and gives him even better survivability than he already has. Uh, A1 attacks one enemy two times. This hits really hard as well if he's built right um, and has 40% chance of placing um, decreased attack, a 50% chance of placing decreased attack to debuff for two turns. Each critical hit will fill the turn meter of all allies by 5%. So it's going to be probably 10% chance because you are going to build him with 100% crit rate. And it's a double hitter. It's just insane. But yeah, this guy is a god in the arena and he is the best live arena champion in the game. So that has been my list, guys. Um, there was no poison champions, no HP burn champions. Raw damage is still the king of arena. Um, but yeah. I can't believe Trunda and Ronda didn't make the list. Let me know who else I missed off the list. Uh, but yeah, I hope you guys do agree with me. And thank you so much for watching. Please do leave me a cheeky thumbs up. Make sure you smash, smash, smash that subscribe. And I'll catch you in my next video. Peace.